Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy before God, also who gave us this precious uh, time to share the heart of God. Uh, today, uh, we will try to study 2 Samuel chapter 15. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter 15. Let us read one scripture. First uh, verse one. Second Samuel chapter 15. From verse 1. After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariot and horse and 50 men to land before him. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. So it was whenever anyone who had a low shoot came to the king for this season that Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? He would say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, oh, that I were made judge in the land, and everyone who has any suit or curse would come to me, then I would give him justice. And then also verse uh, verse 30. Sorry, person. Uh, let's go verse 10. First verse 10. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribe of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom, uh, Absalom reigns in Hebron. And with Absalom went 200 men invited from Jerusalem. They went along in innocently and did not know anything. Then Absalom sent for Ahitophel, the Gil Gilonite, David counselors from his city from Gilo, while he offered sacrifice and conspiracy grow strong for the people with Absalom continually increase in number. Verse 30. So David went up by the sands of the mountain of Oli and wept as he went up, and he had his head covered and went barefoot, and all the people who were with him covered their head and went up weeping as they went up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, today, um, in our church, we have been studying this 
Second Samuel chapter 15. Uh, you are able to see according to the story in chapter 15. Uh, in chapter 14, uh, David sent Joab uh, to call Absalom. Even though Absalom came back to Jerusalem, David, he didn't meet uh, Absalom for two years, but later he called Absalom and kissed him. But after he met David, after four years, what happened? This Absalom, he has been preparing to be a king of Israel and against David. So what he did, uh, he tried to make his own chariot and horse, and also he prepared 50 people who is moving with him. It's like, you know, when present is moving, it's like a convoy. So uh, also he tried to make his image as a great man in the country. And also you are able to see what he did for four years. He tried to steal the heart of Israel from David towards him. So anyone who came for the, uh, the court issue and he tried to bind their heart and he used to say that you are good and also you are right, right? You are right and try to make them to come in on his side. And he prepared this for four years. And finally, he requested David to allow him to go to Hebron for sacrifice. But his purpose, he want to announce like in Hebron that he is a king of Israel. So that is the way how he tried to do it. And then when he heard, when David heard that, Absalom, he took so many people from Jerusalem. He already buy so many people in Israel. And also officially he announced himself in, in Hebron that he is a king. So when he heard all the situation, David decided to left from city of Jerusalem and he ran away so that he able to survive. And also he tried avoiding those a war between David and uh, Absalom. That's why you are able to see now how David uh, flee from the city of Jerusalem and how you are able to see how and how David able to move before God. So this is, um, this is a out appearance and story in this chapter 15. So when I was reading this chapter 15, I was able to see clearly there is a two way. There is a way of Absalom and also there is a way of David. How Absalom tried to be a king of Israel. And when David met this kind of situation, how David able to left and how David stand before God and how he did it in front of God. So through this also, I was able to see the heart of God and also able to see how uh, their life is totally different. For me, while I was studying, I was able to see uh, even in our heart, there is Absalom. Uh, even in our heart, there is Absalom. So while we are thinking the heart of God in this uh, chapter 15, I believe that also God will give us clear heart and showing us our true imagination. So now, as you see, how Absalom, he tried to be a king of Israel. Because as we read the Bible, you could see continue. After this happened, that Absalom provided himself with chariot and horse and 50 men to learn before him. <clears throat> so you can see that Absalom, he tried to prepare his own chariot 
and his own holes. And also he tried to make up. He tried to have a 50 men to learn before him. So he tried to prepare his own soldiers and army. And also whenever he moved, he's showing that how he's great and how he's big. So when I was reading these scriptures, because I never see that David tried to be a king of Israel. Though there was so many challenges and problems, but his heart was able to stand before God. And really he didn't try to be a king of Israel, but God, he is on who made him as king of Israel. I think also you was able to see clearly. But how was the way of Absalom? But really you can see that he is the one who but really his heart, he, he doesn't care what is the heart of God. He doesn't care what is the will of God in Israel. He doesn't know why God established David to be a king of Israel. Yes, the king of Israel cannot be a person who can be as a king of Israel with their own way. Because they must need clear will of God, clear heart of God. But people, they don't care the will of God. They trust themselves. People, they trust themselves. People, they believe themselves. That's why without knowing the will of God, just live according to what they want. They are living according to what they want. They try to live what they want. They try to do what they want. But they don't know the heart of God and will of God and wait upon the Lord. People easily, easily, they follow their own desire. They follow their own thought. So we can see that how Absalom tried to be a king of Israel. Really, it is not from the guidance of God, not from the will of God. It is coming from his own way. Even you can see that now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for this season that Absalom would call to him saying, what city are you from? And he would say that your servant is from such and such tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, look, your case is good and right. And there is no deputy of the king to hear you. So first you can see that he tried to stand and he tried to meet the people who is coming to David and say to him, you are good. Your case are good. Your case are right. And there is no anyone which David prepared to hear from you. So how he is doing now? Because anyone who is coming with a problem, but he can say that you, your case are good. You are uh, right. So what does it mean? Because anyone who is coming, I never see Pasabak, whenever we fellowship with him, I never see that he say that you are right. Oh, you are good. He never say like this. Because, you know, whenever you have a problem, there is no one who is 100% wrong or 100% is right. Is it right? Everyone has some problem and problem. That's why also even me, when someone come to me in fellowship or her, the husband has a problem with wife, wife have a problem with the husband. And when they are coming, they are speaking their own position. They don't speak on the other side. They are only speaking their position and on their position, what they see, how they did. So this way, if you listen from this side, he is right. But if you listen from side of this one, also she is right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because everyone is speaking according to their own position, according to their own view. No one talking the both side. So that's why really each of them, they have their own problem. They, so if I say that you are good, you are right, then they cannot unite. How they are able to unite when they have a problem? Because you should be in the position where they are low. They should discover their long position, each other. So when they see their long position, they are able to put down their right and they are able to unite. Is it right? 
That's why I never even say that you are right because anyone who is coming, I show them what is their wrong and what they have to repent before God. That's why both of them, when they repent before God, they are able to unite before God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, but now, the way how Absalom is stealing the heart of Israel, he doesn't fight with the heart of the people. He doesn't rebuke their own right. He doesn't rebuke their heart. Your case is good. Your case is right. When see you are right, and no one against. Everyone is happy. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they say that uh, they even never put someone to listen from your case. That is a lie. That is not true. So really, we can see that even in our heart, there is Absalom. Absalom tried to steal our heart, the heart which is connecting with the church, the heart which is towards church, towards God, towards the servant of God. But this Absalom stealing our heart, he doesn't want our heart connected with the church. He doesn't want our heart to connect with the servant of God. He doesn't want our heart to connect with God. That's why he tried to steal our heart. How? You are right. You are good. Hey, they, he didn't prepare for you something, something. No, no, don't. you don't need to go there. There is no way. But you are right. I can help you. Yes, the Absalom, this Absalom in my heart, this Absalom in our church, they try to steal the heart of the people which is connecting with the church, which is connecting with the servant of God, try to steal their heart. In which way? You are good. You are right. I think also all of you, we like the people who say you are good. Someone who is different from my opinion, we don't like. We like the people who is connecting. We like the people who has the same opinion. We like those people. Isn't it? Or else we don't like the people who say you are wrong. We don't like the people who are rebuking my heart. We don't like the people who are rebuking my own right. But there is a way how also Absalom, he steal the heart of the people. And he tried binding the heart of the peoples. And, in the, you know, after four years, and uh, he request David to go to Hebron for sacrifice. And at that time, also there is a 200 who follow Absalom. Also, without knowing anything, he just follow. Right? And that is the way how Absalom, he tried to be a king of Israel. So when I see oh, David, he never, when I see, when I remember how David become a king of Israel, he didn't try to be a king of Israel. He didn't try to solve his problem by his way. He didn't try to be a king of Israel by himself. Really, we could see that according to the will of God, according to the heart of God, God has been guiding them. Amen. God has been guiding them. But now you see Absalom, the way how tried to be a king of Israel. He tried to make his own chariot, his own soldiers. He made the 50 people is moving around him to show how he's big, how he's great. And he tried to make still the heart of the people and come to his side. And then announce that he is king of Israel. Anyway, if you look at in chapter 15, looks like Absalom is more strong, right? Absalom is wise. Wow, he has a wife. Yes, you can say it like this. But the way how he starts in this way, God does not happy at all, right? But another side, how was David? You know, how was David? The time he left from, because as you know, David knows very well. Already, so many people, they are standing on the side of uh, Absalom. That's why uh, David decided to left from the city of Jerusalem. Verse 10. Sorry, 14. Chapter 15, 14. So David said, to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem. Arise and let us free, or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make 
has to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring this aider upon us and strike the city with the, the ace of the sword. So now David, he left, he left from the city of Jerusalem. You know, it was not easy. Everyone want to protect their position. Everyone try to protect what they have done. But really we can see that David when they find this kind of challenge, he never tried to protect himself. He never tried to avoid this situation. Really he acknowledged in God. And then uh, he acknowledged in God and he decided to leave from um, Jerusalem because he knew that all this thing is coming from where? Coming from God. If this thing is coming from Absalom, he would fight his own way. Is it right? If it is coming from Absalom, I think David would fight with Absalom. But for me, why David immediately flee from the city of Jerusalem? Why? Because not because of his fear Absalom, because he knew that all these things from God. For us, always look at the situation, right or not? We look at the people, how they speak to me, how they did me, how they did towards me, how they speak, how they abuse, how they, you know, how they did. For us, we only look at those out appearance and we hate them, we angry with them, we, we really, we angry with them, we hate them. Yes, we can do like this. But what is more important? David knew clearly all these things is coming from where? Coming from God. Even though it looks like Absalom is trying to again is David, but in the eyes of David, really he can see that this one is not from God, this is not from David, Absalom. Because I think if he this is Absalom, David will fight. But you can see that immediately David give up and he left. Why? I was thinking, why? Not because of all these things. Really, I can see that in the heart of in the heart of uh, this uh, David, he knew that all these things is coming from where? Coming from God. Amen. Amen. And also, you can see. Verse 24. 24. There was Zadak also and all the Levite with him bearing the Ark of the Covenant of God. They set down the, the Ark of God and Abinadar went up until all the people had finished the crossing over from the city. That a king said Zadok carry the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and show me both in and his dwelling place. Verse 28. So I will wait in the plain of the wilderness un until the word comes from you to inform me. Therefore, Zadok. I have another carry the ark of God back to Jerusalem and they remain there. Brother, you remember there was a battle between Israel and Palestine. At the time, Israel, they brought the ark of the Lord in the battle. And the time Palestine was fearing because, you know, image of the ark of the Lord, isn't it? An ark of the Lord is like God. So if David is together with God, he would show others, isn't it? He would able to show others that, oh, the ark of the Lord is still with me. Yes, God is be with me. God is be with me. He was able to show in this way. But, but what he did, he said to Sadak, you may go back to Jerusalem with this ark. You put this 
ark of the Lord where it was. Isn't it? Why? And he said, if I found the grace in the eyes of God, I would go back to the I would go back to Jerusalem and I would see from there. So really, when I was reading this word of God, I was thinking shortly. Are really? Are really uh, what he see? Really in the heart of David, I can see that he doesn't protect himself. He doesn't exert himself. He accepts that this is from God and also he doesn't try to protect him, exert him. He put down everything before God. He become into the position where he cannot do anything. Amen. And also he surrendered to God. He doesn't try to protect himself. He doesn't try to protect his image. Really, he put down everything and he hand over to God. And really, God, he is on who is working. And verse 30. So David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives, and weep as he went up, and had he had his head covered, and went barefoot, and all the people who were with him covered their head and went up, weeping as they went up. Really, you can see the image of King David. He covered his head. He removed his shoes, and he's moving his cry. Really, he knows that all this thing is coming from God because you remember, you remember when uh, Adam, when, when David um, uh, committed adultery and killed his servant. Really, that time God sent Nadan to rebuke and also Nadan cursed because really all these things will happen because of that sin. So, really, David knew that all this thing is coming from God and he put immediately his position into the lowest position before God and seek his grace, seek his mercy. So everyone, while you are listening and see the story and the heart of God in this Bible, really you can see that there is a way of Absalom and there is a way of David. Brother, how have you been? How we, how you have been moving? Really, when I was reading this word, word of God, really I can see I'm the one who used to live like Absalom. I can see that even in our heart, there is Absalom. This Absalom in our heart, this Absalom in our church, always, always stealing our heart, which is connecting with the David and take them to their own way. Really, I can see that how they are trying to steal their heart, try to make them, you are right. For us, we like, isn't it? Somebody said, you are right. You are right. Yes, you are right. We like those things. But I can see clearly, ah, there is Absalom in our heart, try to steal our heart, which is connecting with the church, which is connecting with the servant of God, which is connecting God, try to steal this heart, move back. And in our heart, continually exert ourselves, trust ourselves, try to establish our position. So now we can see that, ah, there is Absalom in our heart. There is Absalom in our heart. Isn't it? This Absalom try to make you exert yourself, protect yourself, and showing the other things. But David, different. But also you, you remember, even in your heart, not only Absalom is there, also there is David. Also there is the Holy Spirit is in your heart. That's why the Holy Spirit, if you listen from the voice of the Holy Spirit, really make you to surrender to God, humble before God, 
seeking His grace, seeking His mercy before God. Really, we can see that through this word of God, I was able to see how Absalom, how Absalom in my heart has been deceiving us. Isn't it? And really, I can see that how God wants us to stand before God, to live before God. Amen. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. We finish here. Yeah, thank you. Let me finish it from here.